So as you can see here, so as you can see here, we have the engine totally out now of the Grumman. You know, rad and everything inside. Huh. So, and also as you can see, we got the decals peeled off and stuff like that. You know, it's good to go. And we've already started installing the FRP, which is fiberglass reinforced plastic on the walls, insulated underneath. And we also have done the ceiling. So the stuff can start to be put over whenever we're not working on the mechanical. And like I said, I'm not really a mechanic, but I do have a friend helping me. So that's a good thing. Well, finally, we got the engine in. That's a good thing. Oh, awesome. Awesome sauce. So as you can see now, we have most of the FRP installed. And uh, we still have one issue to deal with. The wheel well is definitely a lot higher in this truck. And the fuel tanks for the cabinets to go in. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to the cabinets to get them to fit. So my job for the last couple of days has been to uh, put the rod in the rod cradle in. Yeah, and if you didn't take it apart, it's not as easy as, as it looks. And now we're at another dilemma, right here, as you can see. We have to work on the carburetor. Huh, so they have a heat, uh, a heat, uh, uh, as you can see, here in the carburetor, we got a hot air, hot air release right here. And our spacer doesn't have that. It turns out that this is a marine block or a marine engine. It was rebuilt for a, a big old boat with a bottom end, a lot of bottom end pressure. You see it's brand new. Yeah, our rebuilt fresh paint. And uh, we don't have a carburetor for it. And carburetors really don't exist, but we do have a four barrel holly carb and a spacer. So what, what my friend is gonna do, so after searching far and wide for the right spacer, uh, which doesn't exist for 1985, uh, 351 Windsor with uh, Volvo Penta heads because it was built to be put into a boat, not originally into a truck. A buddy of mine decided to just weld on a piece of steel. Actually, he braced it on and that's going to cover the air intake hole here here so that uh, the air can still circulate up to here and there's no no gap right here at the end so we're going to install this carburetor right away apparently so we still have to connect some transmission lines it's really not that bad you know there to there i think it gets a little closer if we look at it you know maybe a little hose in there somewhere you know help that match up make it another one over here these are the coolant lines we did the let me get up in here I did the exhaust, you know, got the bolts in there and the nuts and stuff, you know, that's all connected. I did, if you look down there, it's kind of hard to see, but we put a mega clamp in and finished the, that part of the exhaust. I know it's kind of upside down, but yeah, yeah. And uh, I hooked up the, I hooked up the transmission linkages here but I didn't know anything about this override thing here. And so apparently this thing goes um, from here, this little arm right here. Let me see if I can find my finger. This little arm here goes up to the carburetor and it's called overdrive or something. Well, I when I tighten the gear here, when I tighten the gear right here, I hooked this, all this up trying to help out my friend that was helping me do the mechanicing here. And uh, it turns out that I stripped this and he had to pull the cover off the transmission. This cover right here. He had to pull the transmission cover off and then swap parts out from another transmission to fix it. And yeah, I heard bad Jeff. Bad, bad, bad Jeff. Bad Jeff several times. So let's get on to what we're up to today. Just reattaching the drive shaft now. Huh, I got Loctite on the nuts.
So we got it all hooked up and everything to go and it looks like we're getting ready to give it a start. Okay. Something did something there. Uh -huh. It was running for a second. Do you want me to drip a little fuel in there? No. Okay, no, I'm just asking. That's no good. <laughs> 